Hi everybody, welcome back to the studio of Perpetual Mojo. I'm Candace. I am your mad scientist for today. If you were to ask anyone who knows me how much I love things that make noise, they would hands down tell you, oh my goodness, she loves things that make noise. And right on cue, it's my little guy, Hershey, who just got a haircut. Doesn't he look handsome? Today I'm going to show you how you can craft your very own wind chimes. Come on, let's go do it. I've always wanted to try making wind chimes. When I went out to the hardware store, I knew I was looking specifically for something that I could do that with. So I figured it would be copper because copper is flexible and workable. And I came on this refrigerator ice maker kit. So it's got 36 inches of tube in it. And I cut them in different lengths with that. And I needed to drill a hole, but the problem with drilling a hole on something round is your drill bit slips. This handy dandy thing came with the refrigerator kit. And you can put a piece of the pipe in there and screw it down until it makes a starter hole. And then you can finish it with your drill. And this finish is something I really love. I like doing that with all kinds of metal just because hammering gives it a facet. I like that a lot. And I don't know if you can tell on this one, but it's still, it's pretty bent. And the hammering will also straighten it out. So I'm going to use a pretty good size, size wooden skewer. And I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to start tapping. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm turning the stick as I tap. And that's going to help me straighten out the tube as well. I was looking all over my studio for something non-traditional to use as a top to hang the chimes from. And I had this bracelet that I did a while ago with cup rims that are wrapped in fabric and eyelash yarn and beads. And I've made a piece with 11 loops. This is 20 gauge brass. And I made the loops up it's kind of equidistant distant for the most part anyway and I'm going to attach them to the bracelet by sewing through with some narrow wire before I start stringing I'm gonna to put together the top of the chimes I had this wire that I'd started twisting for something else and it wasn't what I needed but it looked pretty cool so, so I hung on to it and it's gonna sit on here like that so I'm going to use wire again to sew it on and then once I start stringing I'll use the string from the peaks of the crown to hang it. Once you're ready to attach your hanger you'll need about 18 inches of monofilament with one end tied on to the hanger and then you'll kind of sew through one hole at a time and in between holes you'll hook around your hanger again go through the next hole hook it around your hanger now I've gone all the way around with the monofilament wrapping in between each loop and I'm going to wrap it one more time and I'm going to tie it off. You could even finish this off with a dot of glue if you'd like. You're going to be attaching the chimes the way you attach the top. And so you'll need one long piece. This one's about two feet of the monofilament. You'll tie and glue it through the first loop and thread your chime on. Go through the second loop. Thread your next chime on. Go through the next loop. And you can, you, you can keep these a little bit loose and keep all of your string until you've done all of your leveling with this one. This is even a little easier to do if you hang the piece 
before you start stringing. In fact, I will have to hang it to level it. Once you have them all strung on, you'll want to give yourself a little bit of slack. You'll want to start to pull each piece down until they're all about half inch from the top, half an inch to an inch. I hope that you enjoyed this experiment. I hope that you're inspired to do your own mad scientist thing. Make something that sounds fun, and I hope you share it. You can email me, Candice at CoolToCraft.com, with your photos, your high resolution photos, and your story about what you did. Stay crafty, my friends.